Well, good morning, everybody. If, whether you're tuning in uh, right live or whether you're looking at this later, we're glad to see you. Glad you're a part of our uh, of our fellowship today. Welcome to our first online, fully online service at um, at Tri City Chinese Baptist Church, Fremont, California. Uh, I'm Pastor Watts, and um, I know most of you probably know me already. Let me kind of tell you what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to try to have just a regular worship service. Um, Throughout the whole thing, I've got Jonathan, um, our worship leader, online here in just a moment. He'll be coming up, and um, so whether you're watching on Facebook Live page or whether you're watching on YouTube, either one, I uh, encourage you to uh, engage some if you want to. Um, but again, treat this like a regular worship service. Um, try to limit distractions. Take this time as a time to focus on God with your family uh, and enjoy together. Um, I'm going to turn my mic off when we start singing, so you won't have to hear me sing but we'll hope you'll be able to sing along and enjoy uh, with what Jonathan is doing. I'm here in Fresno at my house. Jonathan is at his house in Fremont. And uh, so let's have a word of prayer and then we'll go right into uh, our worship time together, okay? Father, we're thankful for technology that you have to allow us to um, be a part of what we're doing here. Father, thank you that, um, um, that our church family, as far as we know, is safe and healthy right now. And Father, just um, we offer our worship to you. Um, even though we are separated, we know we are together as your church. And Father, we appreciate um, the opportunity to meet with you together, even over long distance. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing for us. And uh, now we offer this worship to you, Father. Thank you. We bless you. Um, amen. Hey, can you guys hear me all right? Give me a. Thumbs up, Pastor Watts. Uh, thumbs up. You're, you're looking good. So, All right. Come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Savior's obedience and love 
I'm uh, hearing that on the comments on the live stream that there might be problems with the audio. I'm going to switch my microphone input real quick. Can you guys hear me all right? Oh, 
All right, Jonathan, thank you so very much for doing that. I'm going to take Jonathan off the stream right now and uh, bring us back here. So hoping that worked out okay for you guys. Um, I know um, trying to, a uh, couple of times the PowerPoint wasn't doing well because I am doing all the controls here and they're all in different places from what I'm used to. So it's uh, been kind of interesting because to be honest, it's a new day for all of us, isn't it? Um, it really is. Um, for this is the first time since being your pastor that I haven't preached in a, uh, a suit or jacket. Okay. I am wearing a tie um, because I just thought that might be too much change for some of you and uh, just kind of felt normal. So we could all use something uh, uh, pretty normal. I'm sure that all of you got dressed for church in your Sunday best too. So uh, anyway, uh, just wanted to seem a little normal for us there. Um, I truly hope and pray that you're all very safe and um, and stocked with everything supplied with what you need during this time. I haven't heard of anybody with um, with any difficulties yet, but certainly your church is here for you if you need anything. And even though I'm all the way in Fresno, um, we will make sure that um, that you're taken care of because that's what we're, we're here as a family. So we want to be able to to do that for you. Um, so we are here to help each other. Uh, before we pray, let's talk about our text for today. Um, our text is going to be taken. It's actually a passage that I've worked with, uh, that I actually preached on before at our summer retreat. In fact, it's our church theme, but I really thought it was a, a good theme for us to have for us right now for this time. So here's a scripture passage right here. It's Romans chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. We're just going to look at just those two verses today. Uh, I promise we won't be uh, long. We've been about to uh, have a clock right up here that tells me exactly uh, how long we've been broadcasting and uh, we won't go very long today. Um, of course, you know, when a preacher says that, um, it means he doesn't know what he's talking about. So we'll just see what we can do. So let's look at this passage together. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. I think those are great words for us to remember during this time of shelter in place. So let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, as we gather before you today in various places around the East Bay and even beyond in my case, Father, we are very, very thankful that for this reminder that our church is not a place, but it is a people. Father, just thank you. It gives me chills to think about that, that we are we have this great, vivid reminder that church is not a place. It is a people. And today we can say without any doubt that we did not come to church today, but we have gathered as the church. So thank you, Father. As we gather in homes today in California, we're part of your great universal church. And Father, um, we're a loving yet powerful force serving and worshiping a God who is even more loving and even more powerful. Thank you that you're with us and that you bind us together with your love and with your calling on our lives. And Father, let worship continue as your spirit speaks to us through your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, I thought about doing, trying to do some uh, uh, fun stuff about different memes that are on the that are on the websites and things like that. But I thought, you know what? This is really not a time for that at this point. I am just glad you guys are all here and a part of what we're doing. So I've entitled the sermon "Virtues or for Viral Virtues," okay, or "Virtues During the Virus." And uh, in this passage, we're going to look at four virtues that uh, Paul talks about that should that should be available to every Christ follower and something that we need to remember to help us through this crisis and help our families and our communities get through this crisis together, okay? So the first one 
is um, found in verse 12 there. It's rejoicing and hope. And this is one of several, there's about eight or nine um, uh, commandments here. They're actually imperative commands, um, odd Greek construction that makes them commands here, which he's saying, this is what you should be doing, what you ought to do. And the first one is rejoicing and hope. And from this, I would say, here's the, here's the principle that the first point is be faithful, stay positive. Um, you know, that is, that is really something for us to do. It's, it's two, two powerful words in this passage. Uh, and this just in, in the English here, it's three words, two of them very powerful, rejoice and hope. These are two key things to stay positive. We can have joy and rejoice over what God has done in the past and then have hope for what he's going to do in the future. And that gives us um, assurance. God's provision and protection in the past gives us hope for his provision and his protection in the future. Now, Paul uh, knew what he was talking about when he wrote this. Um, a lot of us have not been through any kind of struggles like this before, but Paul had. I want to look at, uh, it's too long for me to put on the screen here, but so I'm going to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 to 20, uh, excuse me, verses uh, 24 to 27. So 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 to 27, Paul talks about some of the struggles he's faced. He says, five times I received lashes from the Jews, 39 times, 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Three times. I, I spent a night and a day in the sea. I've been on frequent journeys and in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers in the sea, dangers among false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food in cold and exposure. And I whined the other day that I had to go to five different grocery stores to try to find everything on my wife's shopping list and still couldn't do it. Yet Paul endured all of these things right here. That's what he, what God had helped him through in the past. And he rejoiced in that. Not that he'd had all these things, but that God had helped him through all these things. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, and I think I've learned now I should put these scripture references on the little banners down here uh, at the time, says, um, 2, Corinthians, 2 Timothy 1, verses 12 to 13, Paul says, For this reason I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day, and that day being the time that Jesus comes back. So Paul says, retain the standard of sound words you've heard from me and maintain love and faith, which are in Christ Jesus. So Paul, in, in spite of all the problems he went through, said, I still know whom I have believed, and I trust him to guard what he started in me, to, to continue on. Now, as I talk with you about this, I, I have to admit, I've, I've alluded a couple of times to you that um, that I sometimes struggle with joy and hope. Um, my wife is either watching this now or going to watch it eventually. Um, ask the family not to come in here during this time, but um, she could testify to this fact that um, I'm, I'm not Mr. Positivity usually. Um, there is, in my natural state, I'm just not a glass half full kind of guy. In my natural state, I'm a no, you know, the glass is half full, but it's half full of stuff I didn't want to eat in the first place or drink in the first place. And it's also dirty because some toddler came by and decided they want to take a drink out of it. Now it's got backwash in it. I mean, that's the kind of guy I can be sometimes. It is not very pretty. Um, but, you know, that's a recipe for worry, a recipe for doubt and a recipe for depression. And Paul is telling us here through the through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit not to focus on that, but to stay positive rejoicing in what God has done and having faith in him and hope that he will continue on in the future. So during a time when many of us are not working, when our savings may be dwindling, when we can't find everything we want in the grocery stores and we have the fear that the virus dun, 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 might be right around the corner, depression and even despair could haunt any of us at this point. Now, I don't have a cure for the virus, but the Bible gives us a cure for depression and for despair. 
take time individually with your families and with your small groups in the church too, to recount the ways that God has taken care of you in the past. And during this crisis, focus on the ways he's going to take care of you in the future. Count up those blessings, thank him for every one of those times, and affirm to him that you know of his care in the past and focus your mind on the hope that he will take care of us in the future. I believe it will happen. I'm, there's so many things that I'm thankful for now that I haven't even thought about um, lately. Um, many of you know that, that Friday I had to go down to um, LA to pick up my daughter who's had, um, she's in the hospitality industry and it's suffering right now, but I can rejoice in the fact that she got here safely and she's able to spend several weeks with us. And so this is going to be a great time for our family to be together. Um, and we're going to practice not getting on each other's nerves, being um, locked up in the house together for so long. But uh, but I'm going to rejoice in that and look forward and, and, and to, the, to, to the what a great time it's going to be and have hope for the future. Now, in a serious note, I cannot promise that everyone we know or even that all of us will come through this virus without any pain or sorrow. I, I wish I could tell you that. But I know the history of Christianity tells us that that God doesn't doesn't always protect his people from every little thing. He doesn't, he doesn't keep us from, from getting sick. He doesn't keep us from tribulation and persecution. We suffer through the same things all of humanity does. But there is a promise, not that we won't be touched by any problems, but there is a promise that we will be touched by God and that he will care for us whatever happens. He will be with us to strengthen us and to guide us through everything that happens. There is nothing that could happen that God's not going to be a part of because of his presence and his provision and his protection. That leads us to our, to our second point then. So because of his presence and our hope, we can be firm and persevere. And that's what Paul just said, basically persevering in tribulation. Now, tribulation, we don't know exactly what was going on at that time. Point. We do know Paul wrote this to the Romans, and this was right about the time that the Emperor Nero came into power. And if scholars have dated Romans right, this was only a year or two before the Great Tribulation under the time of Nero. And you know the stories. Uh, Nero was known for uh, taking Christians and um, uh, dipping them in tar, nailing them to a cross, and then setting them on fire to light his gardens at night. Um when a, a, a fire devastated Rome under Nero's rule, he uh, f inflamed, uh, probably poor choice of words, inflamed persecution for the Christians by blaming them for the fire, saying it was because of Christians that the fire happened in Rome. And so uh, a big tribulation, a big persecution happened among Christians at that time. Um, but persecution was just a part of the tribulation the church in Rome faced. We mentioned last week when we had our last on-site service that um, that many plagues had swept, swept through the Roman Empire during uh, during that time. And persecution was just one of the tribulations that his followers often faced. But plagues, famines, things like that often hit God's people just as much as anybody. In fact, persecution has always been a hallmark of following Christ all the way back to the time of Jesus himself. We follow one who was crucified for being who he was, for being the son of God. And so we are called to be like him, which means we may also face some kind of persecution. You know, it, it hasn't really happened strong persecution in this country yet. Um, so it's more tribulation than anything. But I just want you to know that, um, that there are other things coming at some point. And we can be strong. We can be firm. We can persevere. Jesus warned us about that in John 15, verses 18 to 21. He says, if the world hates you, you know that it's hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my words, they will keep yours also. But these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. 
boy, that doesn't, those are not the words of somebody who's trying to get a lot of followers, is it? But he was telling us what's going to happen. In fact, one of the most impactful books I have read recently, I should have had it here to show you, I wasn't thinking about, about that at that point, is a book called The Insanity of God. It's published under the pseudonym of Nick Ripken. And Nick was actually a graduate of Gateway Seminary that's just down the street from our church. And uh, he researched the growth of church, the church in areas where there was persecution. And uh, in one such country, I won't mention which country it was, uh, he said this, um, he had a pastor tell him, do you know what prison is for us? It's how we get our theological education. Prison is for us like seminary is for you. That They looked at that going, that's, that's just part of being a servant of God. We'll eventually go to prison. But that's where we learn from other Christians and where we study. And we've got time to focus and learn God's word. In fact, he said there was one preacher that was talking and other preachers said, you can't trust everything he says yet because he hasn't been to prison yet. Um, in other words, he hadn't, hadn't got his master's degree in that, in that country in theology by going to prison. Um, it's, it's tough sometimes. And, and, you know, while we aren't facing per persecution, we're far from it. We are facing tribulation. It's a scary, uncertain time. Uh, we don't know who might get sick or how many might get sick or how long it might last or what kind of long-term effects will be on our families, our nation, and even our world. But we do know this. Paul said it four chapters earlier in Romans, Romans chapter eight. He said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the suffering with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Boy, I messed that up, didn't I? Um, let's try that again. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation? The answer is no. Or distress? Again, no. Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? The answer is no. None of these things separate us from the love which is in Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage you during this time of tribulation, however easy or light it might be for your family. Stay firm in your commitment to Christ, and he'll give you the strength to endure it. Um, so how do we stay firm? Well, that's easy. That brings us to our next point. Be focused and pray. Um, I think the word focus here is really helpful because it says, uh, um, what is the word devoted to prayer right there? And so I think there's two parts of focusing in prayer. The first is, we're focusing on God and we're communicating with him regularly. Even though we have to spend um, more time finding food or more time caring for the elderly or people who've gotten sick, you right now probably have more free time than you've had in quite a while. And great, spend some of that time with family. But think about the things you're saving. Most of us have very little commute time right now. Uh, I don't have my three hour drive to Fremont every week. Um, you certainly didn't have as long a drive to church today. Um, even when, during my drive to LA, it was much quicker because there was just a lot less traffic on the street, even in LA. So take some of that time and strengthen your prayer life, beef it up some, do more prayer as an individual, pray more with your families, call up a friend and pray for them. Uh, find you new unique ways to pray, um, pray through the different parts of your house. Um, uh, put on some meditation music and just, just focus on God for a little bit. And it doesn't have to be, you know, magnificent King James prayers. There's nothing special about praying, Lord, we thanketh thou that thou hast blessed us and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes it's just, as I said, to focus. That's the other part. Just to focus your heart and focus your mind on what is important. And maybe spend some time just quiet with God and to focus on one of his attributes. I'll give you a few of them to think about. You could focus on his love or on his kindness, um, on his truth, that God is truth, his um, knowledge, his power, or his mercy. There's a whole list of attributes of God. And uh, Google is a wonderful tool. So use Google um, to, to research attributes of God. Uh, go to um, uh, Bible Gateway or Bible.com and use some of the tools there to uh, research the attributes of God and just 
just spend some time focusing on him. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a lot more fruitful than the binge watching we're going to do on Netflix or Hulu or whatever it is you have at home. So focus on that. Um, Rick Warren always says it in a good pithy way. And so I'll steal this from him. He wrote in The Purpose of Christmas. He said, the more you pray, the less you'll panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. I think that's great. Let me say that again. The more you pray, the less you'll panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. So, and worship is really another form of prayer in the long run. So let me give you some things to, to pray about. We talked about some of these before, but I'm gonna read them off a list here, just some specific things, and maybe take a note on this, of some things you can be praying for um, as, you, um, as, you, as we go through this time together. First, praying for those who are hurting, that don't have access to services that, that, that we do, that we need. Um, praying for people that, um, that need doctor's appointments that can't get them right now, or uh, need some transportation and having trouble finding it. Uh, pray for government leaders again. There has never been a time that we needed to uh, focus on our government leaders more than we do right now and be able to help them step up, make the right decisions. None of us have been through this before. None of them have been through this before. And in a lot of ways, they are having to make it up as they go along. So pray for government leaders. For first responders and medical personnel, both those who are on the front line right now and those who are waiting in the wings. Um, people that have to work in nursing homes and things like that. Um, a lot of, I have a, I have a sister-in-law who's in a nursing home and um, none of the family can visit now. And that means that all of those people working in the nursing home they have no help that they normally get from families. It's all up to them right now. And so they have to do it all themselves. So praying for them. Number four, pray for our grocery grocers and delivery people. Who would have thought we'd have seen a time when grocery stores and Amazon Prime drivers and UPS drivers would be the heroes keeping our supply lines going. But pray for those people. Of course, for our missionaries around the world. Pray for them as they're... Um, have some unique cases here as they still try to minister to populations, especially in places like China and like Italy and things like that. And not just the missionaries, but the Christians who are there that uh, the, uh, um, uh, the indigenous uh, Christians there in the, in the area pray for people who are missing paychecks right now. We have some in my family. You probably have some in yours that are some missing part of their paychecks, some missing all of it for a while. And so pray for them uh, and maybe look for ways to help them also, but we'll get to that in a moment. Pray for people who are afraid or isolated or ill-prepared. Pray for our children with disruptive lives. We normally, Friday nights, would have 60 children at our church uh, being loved on by our team of volunteers. And uh, at 11 o'clock today, we would normally have children in Sunday school and, and in children's church right now uh, being loved on by more volunteers, more adults speaking truth and love into their lives. They don't have that right now. And for some of them, it may be very scary. So be praying for them. Pray also for boldness for Christians to rise to the challenge right now, to be bold, to be strong. We want you to be safe and secure, but bold and strong also. And um, there are some Christians who have to run toward danger in this case. And so pray for them. Pray for churches to respond with boldness and compassion. So many people, Pastor Lee, uh, Roddy, uh, Jonathan, Deborah, uh, so many people. Annie had been working this this week. Melissa tirelessly to try to figure out how to get online provision for our church. But you know what? There are other Christians just dealing with how to get people food and housing and uh, medical attention and um, comfort that we don't have to worry about right now. Uh, and then, of course, pray for that this would be a time for families to bond together and to draw, 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 draw closer. OK, so that's the prayer part of this. Let's look at our last point. We're almost done. The last point comes out of verse 13. It's be friendly and provide. And there are two commands in verse 13 that lead to the same principle. And it's simply this, help people, be a helper. You know, it's a time when people are, are just gonna go crazy. I've noticed people driving more distractedly, people just being more out of tune with things. Some people have a heightened sense of alertness, but others are just so distracted by the worries right now that they need help, somebody coming alongside them. and. I said persecution had been a hallmark of Christ followers. Helping and hospitality has been a hallmark also. And this command here says to practice hospitality or a better translation might be to pursue hospitality. Seek after it. It's showing kindness to strangers, to everyone. 
especially to those who need kindness. Now, when Paul wrote this, there were very few hotels or inns. Um, it was not uncommon for people to have to take in travelers and those who did not have a place to spend the night. We're now facing a time like that. There are hotels closing, uh, not permanently, but temporarily as, as we're facing this crisis together. Um, and so it's a time for uh, people to really, be, for Christians to step up and show the hospitality that we're known for. Um, other religions show hospitality too, but Christians, this is endemic. This is, this is central to who we are. Uh, the number of verses in the Bible that talk about being kind to one another. And, uh, and in Hebrews, it talks about entertaining strangers and just so many examples that we have from this. Now, you may not be in the position to take someone in. If you are, great. But if you're not, there are other things you can look at doing. Volunteer to deliver groceries or to run errands or to help with chores for people who can't. Uh, donate blood. I'm a regular blood donor. And so I want to encourage you to do that. You know, we think nah, there's nothing spiritual about donating blood, but there really is. We're helping save lives with that. And it's just another way of, of helping. So if you're able to donate blood, do that. As soon as I'm able again, I donate every eight weeks. As soon as I am able. Um, check with the schools and see if they need help helping students. Um, maybe not in your area. We live in a fairly affluent area, but um, but maybe in your area, there are kids that are going hungry now because school was the only place they got a meal. And while schools are doing a great job of delivering or of trying to provide meals, there may be kids who can't get them delivered and they may need somebody just to drive it and you don't have to get near people. You just have to drop it at the front door and knock and, and go. But helping kids get food, something like that. But be creative. Um, uh, pray about it. Share ideas in your small group. And maybe there's something you've thought about that you can't do, but somebody else in your small group can. So do that. Let's, let's be proactive and moving forward and shining as followers of Christ, being his hands, touching people in Jesus' name. And now this may sound weird. This is going to be the weirdest thing. And I'm saying it where it's going to be recorded and people are going to have it for all posterity. But this is a great time to be a Christ follower. We're about to get a spiritual education in ways that Sunday school and sermons could never do. We're about to get a great spiritual education. So I encourage you, tune into what God's saying to you this time. Um, I know it's difficult. We're distracted. I find myself sometimes going several times, you know, uh, several minutes or hours sometimes not thinking, okay, God, where are you in this? But trying to train my mind to spend more time focused on him and listen to his voice and find ways that we can move forward. So that's it. Just in, in, in retrospect, be faithful and stay positive, be firm and persevere, be focused and pray. Okay. And be friendly and be willing to provide for people. Let's pray. It may seem a little odd to be praying online, but Father, I just again thank you. And I, I know that you hear our voices, even though we're not gathered in one place. And Father, I just ask that you would um, first make your presence known. Father, whether they're families on the couches or individuals by themselves, whether people watching this live or watching it later, Father. Um, Father, I know watching a video, it's hard to tune in. It's hard to worship sometimes, but I just pray you will help us focus, help us tune in, help us engage with you and engage with each other, even if it's online. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. But Father, thank you also for your assignment that you've given us to be salt and light, to be a help to be your hands and feet during a time like this. Father, strengthen us through your spirit. Guide us to strengthen each other. Father, and through this crisis and through your church and through our church, Father, glorify your name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, hey, before you, uh, before you go, um, I wanted to do a couple of things and make a couple of announcements. Um, so um, um, I was just checking to make sure that, that we didn't have another song from Jonathan on here. But Oh, we do. Jonathan, you're going to lead us in the doxology. Okay, I was looking at what we have here. So let's see if I can break. Nope, we don't. Okay, we're still, we're still working out the bugs here. Hey, that we even were able to do this is an amazing, amazing thing. So let me make a couple of announcements for you real quick while we, before we go, okay? Um, first, I want to remind you that we have an online discipleship class coming up. 
uh, Andrew, um, she was going to be doing an online discipleship class. I know that's a weird thing there. I tried to send out this link to everybody. If you didn't get an email from me today, it means we don't have your correct email address in our thing. So one of the things I do want you to do, well, I'll get to that in a moment, but to, is to let me know what your, your right email address is. But at 11 o'clock, you can go to Google Hangouts. You don't have to download any software or anything. Just click that, uh, just type in that link right there. And I will try to post it in the notes here too. Um, can't do that all at the same time. But, uh, or if somebody's up there, I can post it, uh, whether you're on Facebook, uh, Facebook and YouTube, we've got people on both things. So if uh, somebody on Facebook and somebody on YouTube can, um, can post that, type it out for, that'd be great. But uh, we can do that at 11 o'clock. So in um, about 45 minutes, and um, it'll be just another unique experience that we'll have together. Uh, so um, do that. Um, second, we'd love to know how your experience was here with this. Uh, this is our first time doing this. And uh, we've got some bugs to work out, but we're still trying to work it out. So I have created, uh, I know this is this is um, uh, Roddy Kwan's thing, and he's going to be um, you know, upset for me trying to do it myself. But um, well, I thought I had it here and I, and I don't, but we have a Google form, um, a Google form. And so I don't know where my banner went. I had one with it on there and I don't see it now. So there's another little thing there, but um, we'll send out a link or put it here, post it to for a Google form that we have just for you to kind of let us know what you felt and what you thought and, and what kind of experience it was. We'd love to know whether you're watching it live or, or later, if you were, um, how much of it you watch, that kind of thing, uh, how many people were with you. So, uh, but mainly just your comments to know how we can do a better job. Our goal here is not to get as many people watching as we can. Our goal is not here to have the slickest, most, you know, uh, fancy YouTube channel. And eventually this is on my YouTube channel. It will eventually go over to the church's YouTube channel. But, um, but the idea here, we just want to provide um, connection for our church and, um, and, and uh, help you in your spiritual development during this time. So we want to stay connected mainly and continue to grow as Christians. Um, if you were in adult Sunday school last week, Kerman mentioned that um, sometimes when you work at home, you may, not, you may not be quite as diligent and focused at work as you normally are. It'd be the same with our spiritual life. When we're separated as, as a church, it might be easy to, uh, to slack off in some of our spiritual disciplines. So just want to connect together so that we continue to do that. Um, we're still figuring out how to conduct all our ministries online. Uh, most of our fellowship groups are still meeting uh, either through Zoom um, or, or um, WeChat or something like that. So we're all trying to find out different platforms we can use. Um, so we're developing more options for Sunday school and Awana. So just keep posted for further notice. That's why we need your email address. Um, and so um, um, if, you, if you haven't gotten emails from us, then we may not have your correct email address. So I want to ask you to email me your uh, your just your contact information. It's daryl.watts, D-A-R-Y-L dot W-A-T-T-S at tccbc.org. And tccbc, like Tri-City Chinese Baptist Church dot org. Or if that's too hard for you, you can just do info at uh, tccbc.org and we'll get it. We just want to make sure we've got your right information. Um, just a couple more quick announcements. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, two more. Uh, we're in the process of setting up online giving. Um, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be mercenary at this point. Online giving is not our most important thing, but we still need to, you know, keep the church operating if we can. And um, and contri contributing is a is a commandment that we need to follow still. So um, we want to figure out a way. So we will uh, keep you posted on that and uh, figure out how we can do that. In the meantime, you can email a check to the, I mean, mail a check to the church if you want. But uh, we are working on it, and uh, it will make sure it's a safe and secure and easy process to do. Finally, reach out to each other. Uh, just reach out to each other during this time. Connect to people. Make sure that um, that um, that uh, that uh, we're checking on each other. That we're encouraging each other. Share love. Share faith. Share hope. Share encouragement. Um, share scripture verses. This is a great time to work on your scripture memory. That kind of stuff. Um, look for opportunities also to share the gospel with non-believers. Um, I'll try to keep doing some updates this week. You'll get it from Pastor Lee, probably. We will do our best to stay, stay connected. Uh, we appreciate you guys all very much. Thank you for joining us today. Um, go to our Facebook page and like it and get some people on the English group also. We want to just, it's just a way of connecting together, okay? Uh, we'll continue to pray for you. We love you all. Stay safe, uh, stay secure, but be bold and be strong and trust in God. God bless you. Goodbye.